welcome back to the channel we are here once again with my 1995 ford escort station wagon known as the sippy cup this is your first visit to the channel there is a playlist for that car that i will link right up here as well as down in the description so you can go get all caught up on all the happenings on it if you would like today's mission is to put a new exhaust on it which i am not looking forward to because i found the aftermarket stuff never freaking fits right but it's really got to be done it's bad i'll show you how bad <laughs> But hopefully it was conveyed that this car is pretty ludicrously loud. Uh, the only actual muffling going on right now is it still has a cat because these things run their catalytic converter basically at the engine. Otherwise, there's a hole that's probably six or eight inches long between the, the cat pipe and the rest of the exhaust. So it's the exhaust just kind of there for the ride. To top things off, I've been putting this off for so long because I was hoping that by now I would have had my MIG welder running and an oxyacetylene torch set up going, and I have neither of those things. So this exhaust is going to be what it's going to be. I am going with a supplier I have not yet tried before for these cars, but I know I've seen the aftermath of. Um, it's a Walker pipe system. And when I say I've seen the aftermath, I mean, I've paid a shop to put it on another Escort because I did not want to screw with it. And when the car came out of the shop, it looked uh, like they literally just bolted it on. It's held on with two bolts, three hangers, then the muffler and tailpipe, which are no big deal. So I'm hoping it fits without much trouble. The flip side to all of that is uh, the muffler is already three days late. It should have been here by now. I think the exhaust clamps I've got are going to work and I like to use special clamps, which is why it's kind of a thing. I think I bought bolts to bolt it on to the down pipe that are actually too small, but they'll probably still work. And this thing has an alignment appointment that took two weeks to get. And I decided I would do this, you know, in the meantime, and then instead waited until two days before the appointment. So no muffler, uh, no new tailpipe. The pipe I have may fit, the clamps I have may fit, and we got a hard deadline. This thing drives across town with literally no exhaust on it, I really don't care. But I'm gonna look like a friggin' idiot at the alignment shop, and we can't have that. I'll get this thing jacked up and we'll get into it. I really don't think it's gonna be that bad, but famous last words. So another day has come and gone, but I do have the car lifted. What I don't have is a frickin' muffler. Also in the bad news category, this is the replacement exhaust. And that hanger, as it is on the car right now, has like a sheet metal spacer that drops it like an inch off the pipe. And as you can see, our replacement doesn't look like that. Now that doesn't mean this isn't gonna fit the way it is. What it does mean is it's just different and it worries me when stuff is different and that's why I don't like doing this job. And right there, you should be able to see what I'm talking about. I guess it's more like a half an inch, but it's got that sheet metal hanger on it that the other system doesn't have. So at this point, I'm just hoping and praying that everything fits well. This is probably my fifth time of complaining about it right now, but this is why I don't like doing this, because this stuff never freaking fits right. And other bad news, but this one I saw coming, there's a 0% chance of me ever getting those bolts out. And I also have pretty poor access to get on them with a cutoff wheel or anything. So I'm actually gonna take my grinding disc and just try and grind the head of that bolt off. The good news is I'm pretty confident those are through bolts and they're not just studs tack welded on or anything like that. So I think we're gonna be in good shape. This is also a good time to show you the hackery that has been done on this exhaust system over the years. Funny enough, when I got this car, like the day I drove it home, this was the quietest Escort I'd ever driven uh, because it had all of that I don't know, header wrap or whatever, just completely all over that pipe, just barely holding things together. And you can see there's, you know, some hose clamps and some sheet metal and just stupidity all over this car. Guy worked real hard to try and get every penny out of this $2,500 car when he sold it to me. But anyway, that is why we're putting a whole new system on it. Every indication that I have is that this is the original Ford exhaust. Uh, the muffler is very clearly stamped Ford and someone has just cobbled this thing together repeatedly over the years and it's just time to go. I don't think that Walker system is super high quality. In fact, I know they're not very high quality because I've owned them before. They are also dirt cheap. I think that was like, I think it was right around $100. So it just, 
it's mind boggling that people screw around with stuff like this over like a hundred bucks. If you had the ability to get under the car and cobble it up like that, you had the ability to do what I'm about to do as well, probably. Anyway, I will stop complaining now and just get to grinding the head off of that bolt and hopefully not horrifically injuring myself in the process. Kind of having second thoughts about this grinding wheel. So I think I actually can get on it to at least get it started with a cutoff wheel without uh, much risk. Of course, I didn't bring one under the car with me. That would have been too easy. Ooh. I don't think I have that disc in there very well. That's better. That's the risk of me wearing iPro, as I am an eyeglasses wearer, and I can't wear my glasses and my iPro at the same time, usually. Anyhow. I want to make sure I don't do what I was about to do there and cut through the cat pipe. So what I've done there is given myself a pretty good start. Now I'm going to go back at it with the grinding disc. I'm growing super concerned that I'm just going to cut through that pipe because I keep running the wheel into it. I think I'm best to get you guys out of my way, or at least move you. At least move my lights a little too. Yeah, let's see if I can get on it like so. Okay, I think I got her. You can see that whole circle outline now around that thing. That should be the center of the bolt. And I'm hoping that the bolt doesn't have threads anywhere near up there. And I should be able to just take a hammer and punch and blast that thing out of there, or at least get started on that idea. So right off the hop, I'm just gonna try the vice grips. See if I have any luck. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> That's real tight still. It's probably not good news for my other plan. Yeah, and you guys are in my way again. I hate telling you that. And now you're probably just not going to have any lights. No way I'm going to get this lucky. I think it moved. It's moving. And I'm just barely able to get a swing on it. I think it's moving anyway. Yeah, you can see it's got it recessed almost immediately and I can just barely freaking hit it. So that's awesome. I'm really hoping this one of those videos where I become a big liar and this is like the easiest job on the planet and I complain a lot about nothing. You see. Well, it moved some and then kind of quit. Try vice grips again. I'm gonna actually try and get back on the the bolt section and not the nut. Ah. Ooh. Ah. I don't think that's going to do anything either. Nope. Now I'm thinking air hammer. Let's give it a whirl. And here on the other side, I have reasonable access to get right on the bolt with the cutoff wheel and cut it off. But I'm shooting right between this jack stand and the tire, so I don't have a lot of room to get in there. And somehow this thing is just like raining sparks on me that actually are burning. Good times, good times. I cannot see if I got good enough or not. So I'm just gonna change out to the grinding wheel. And just kind of do the same thing I did on the other side. And this side, we get a new flange with our new exhaust. So I don't really care if I go deep.
Yeah, there's like raining sparks straight into the wheel well and like straight on my face. So now I can't see, which I think is an improvement. I think we got her. I can see a, a round shape. I can reach my regular punch and hammer, but I don't think I can get enough swing to make anything happen. Yeah. All right, you guys get the idea. So the next escalation of events is gonna be me taking my saws all to that pipe and just cutting it off so then I can manipulate the flange by itself and see if we can just get it off that header pipe. It'll also be a lot easier to work with without the rest of the system in our way. One problem I'm gonna have is I would like to have about a 10 inch steel blade for that. And all I've got are like fives, which, you know, story of my life, but also the story of my life. We make do with the motion in the ocean. Make sure I'm cutting through the right one. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. When I said the rest of the system, I guess I meant this little stublet of a pipe that they tried to hot glue back on. Anyway. Now I can futz around with that flange at my leisure. Next move is gonna be getting it out of all the hangers. And I bought a new tool, especially for this job, that looks pretty neat. And let's hope it is, because sometimes those are a real nightmare. These are Lyle exhaust hanger pliers. The idea is, just put it on there and give her a squeeze. I imagine we'll, we may have to work around a little bit. I imagine wrong, that uh, popped right off. Far off as it's gonna pop anyway. Come on, there we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> definitely worth what they cost so far these and they were not very expensive i will of course link in the description i'm even going to go for the far side that i can just barely reach and see how they do perfect yeah freaking a sweet <laughs> i've hopelessly jammed the tool in i don't think it's that bad but we'll join back up in a minute there's like two more of these things at the back and we'll follow along once i pry me tool out of there here's the other one on the main pipe there's one on the muffler too maybe two in the muffler uh, just like butter oh yes very good very good and if you're noticing this car is getting horrendously rusty you're right remember five years and that includes not driving this in winters anymore and then this thing's probably bound for the junkyard and I'm probably going to do some preventative maintenance, I guess, on the rust. Just some, I guess, longevity work. So subscribe and stay tuned for that one if you'd like. Anyway, let's go snag the muffler. Very pleased with these so far. Yep, there are two on the muffler. There's one right back here at the rear bumper. And there's one right there on the forward edge of the can. And I'm also quite confident I will have to cut the pipe in front of the muffler to get it off. And I kind of wanted to do that anyway, because I may try and recycle this muffler for a day or two. I'm going to try and recycle my tailpipe uh, pretty much forever. This is the original tailpipe. It's in good shape. There's really nothing to it. It's just a little bend. And they went like 20 bucks for one of those things. So I'm just going to try and lop it right off at the muffler when I get the new muffler and just keep it for the future. And it's going to be so dark under here because I was too lazy to move my lights. You guys aren't going to be able to see much. If you haven't caught it before, I hate working on exhaust, so you're going to have to take that as kind of a sorry, not sorry moment. All right. Oh, there are two on the muffler at the bumper. One over here, one over there. You guys probably saw that before I did. Including crawling around and talking to you guys about it, it took me, I would say, easily less than 10 minutes to do all those uh, hanger locations. So if you've ever fought with those things before, you're going to appreciate how nicely those Lyle tools work. Nobody's paying me to say that, by the way. I bought those with my own money, like I buy all this stuff. So now I think the move is I'm going to put a block of wood right in here, just where you can't quite see, and hold the tailpipe off of the bumper. Hopefully so I don't break the bumper. And I'm going to take my saws all and cut just in front of the muffler, as far in front of the muffler as I can. And then the system and the muffler should separate. And by the way, for the OEM muffler, this is the Ford muffler. This thing's actually in pretty good shape. It's on its way, but it doesn't have any holes in it yet, which is just amazing to me. The aftermarket stuff lasts about 12 seconds. Like seriously, the reason I don't have my muffler right now, my replacement, is because I ordered the Walker stainless steel one. Because it'll last about three years, and the regular Walker one will last about one year. It's just completely ridiculous how a factory exhaust system will make it for 30 years. And 
an aftermarket one will make it for about 30 days. Take it back, the plot thickened a little bit once I could look at the top side. This guy's pretty crunchy, but all the same. She's the factory Ford piece. Ford part number's still on it. Good grief, look at how thick that flange is. No wonder it lasts forever. That's like an eighth inch flange around this thing. Holy crap. I haven't worked on anything new in quite some time. When I say new, I mean newer than this millennia. But I haven't seen anything like that. I don't know, ever. So maybe like newer cars are doing stuff like that? I don't know, anyway. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get as close to this factory weld on the tailpipe as I can with the Sawzall and just lop her on out of there. I'm pretty proud of how the old Ryobi is performing with the cheapest and shortest Sawzall blade I could find. Uh, there is a review of this thing coming soon. I'm caught behind the bracket there. About off anyway. Yep. All right, so hopefully with just a little bit of cleanup there, we can save ourselves about 20 bucks and just recycle this tailpipe. If not, we'll roll without a tailpipe for a few days. So my next mission is gonna to be to get back under the car and get the rest of the old system out of there, which shouldn't be a big deal, and then try and jimmy that flange loose, which might be a big deal, we'll see. But all that is basically just the fact of doing it. If there's anything interesting that comes along, I will jump back in, but otherwise I would expect you to come back when it's just done. So as you may have seen coming, that front flange is in fact a complete nightmare. As you see it now, the flange is actually gone. It came off finally. What I ended up doing was grinding the head off the back of the other side of the bolt too. Ground that guy down about half, and then the flange came off, but that nubbin of bolt is hopelessly stuck in there. So I'm gonna try something dumb and see if it actually works, and so then it wouldn't be dumb. So what I've got going on there is a giant socket that I'm using as a press die, and a relatively small C-clamp I'm going to try and use as a press and see if I can just press that thing loose. Uh, you guys are not going to be able to watch while I do it because i got to be right where you're looking. And I'm going to give this about a oh, 40% uh, success rate, I would say, but it's worth a shot because everything else sucks more than this. So I've got that thing on there so tight that I'm spraying the C-clamp or stripping it. I don't think it's actually gotten loose, but what I'm going to do is apply some heat to it while it's under that much pressure and see if we get lucky and it bounces out of there. Also gonna see if I can avoid setting my car on fire. This is why I didn't want to do this until I had a real torch and a welder and all that crap, by the way. It's technically not the car on fire, that's the paint on the C-clamp. <laughs> so, time to see if I can horrifically burn myself. If I can even reach to try. I'm not sure this is a great idea, but... So I think I'm gonna give that the old WD-40 quench. So while it's all expanded like that, the oil might actually get down in there and do something. So I'm gonna let that sit there and just be hotter than the hinges of Hell's Gate for a long time. And then I'm gonna take that clamp and everything apart and just try whacking it with a hammer. And when that doesn't work, I will probably, I guess, go around to the front and try and grind the head off of it, even though I have uh, really poor visibility to do that and see if maybe I can knock it back this way. Cause we had good luck doing that on the other one. What I'm really hoping hasn't happened is I'm really hoping that this one isn't a stud, that somebody had drilled out the other side and then this is still a factory stud or something cause that would suck. I don't think so. It looked just like the other one, but we'll see. So it's been probably 25 or 30 minutes and that thing didn't fall apart while I was gone. So it's probably still just stupid tight. So I guess I'm just gonna take all that crap off and Beat it with a hammer and see if anything changed. I'm betting nothing did. Uh, yes, I was correct. Absolutely nothing has changed. Uh, to my surprise, the C-clamp was actually still a little bit warm. Not hot, but warm. So I think the next thing now is I am just going to grind both sides of that thing down until they're flush and pray I don't damage the pipe in front of it because I do not want to replace it 
and then see if I can somehow hammer it out of the hole or I guess maybe drill it out if I have to. That's gonna be a super big nightmare too. Uh, about the only thing I have that will do that is my right angle drill and it may not want to fit either. So anyway, this is gonna be tons more fun. So that ended up being completely ridiculous. Uh, I ended up actually drilling it from the back and drilled it way off center. Eventually got a hole through it, broke a bit trying. I tried to get it out with a regular hammer and punch and hit my hand so hard with the hammer I broke skin, which is always fun. I don't think I broke any bones though, but I'm sure it'll hurt for weeks to come. When that all finally failed, I got on it from the front and, and oh yeah, I ground both sides down totally flush. I got on it from the front with the air hammer again after it had a hole in it and under a lot of protest with a hole in it, the air hammer finally knocked it out. What a monster pain in the ass. I'm remembering why I don't do exhaust stuff or why I had a embargo on exhaust stuff for years. So finally, an exhaust held on with two bolts that took two hours to get out is now been removed. The next thing I need to do is clean that flange face up and I'm just gonna use my die grinder with a wire wheel to do that. Thinking I'm gonna go with the less aggressive wire wheel to do it. Yeah, just get that done right quick. Should not be a huge deal. And then we get to the part that I've truly been dreading, which is seeing how badly the new parts fit. Once again, I'm gonna do my best for you, but I cannot see the viewfinder on the camera. And I'm probably gonna end up blocking the shot anyway. By the way, this is why I'm using the less aggressive wheel. So when it grabs, it doesn't just destroy things. So I got it as cleaned up as it's gonna get. You did see me switch off to the more aggressive brush, or you may have seen it, I don't know. Because right down here at the bottom, the flange is so corroded or the old gasket or something that there's an actual step there that I can feel. I've decided I do not care, and I'm gonna put it back together, and that is what the super freaking thick exhaust gasket is supposed to take care of. If I am wrong about that, with all this stuff being brand new and with stainless steel bolts going in there, it should not be a big deal for me to tear this back apart at a later date and fix it. Speaking of, the stainless bolts I bought are far too small. Those should be probably the next size up. I think those are M8s, they should probably be M10s. I'm also not going to worry about that. The way putting stainless bolts on exhaust stuff has worked for me in the past is that instead of rusting together so you can't fit a wrench to them, they will almost immediately gall up when they get hot. So you put a wrench on each side and then they just break in half and you can replace them. So I'm just going to run these the way they are. Or actually with some washers and lock washers. I do like to run traditional split locks and exhaust stuff because in my mind they help with things that change temperature. Maybe they don't, but that's what I'm going to do. And because of the washers, they shouldn't, you know, drop through the holes or anything. So that is what we're gonna do there. As far as my actual exhaust system, to further compound my frustration until literally right this second, despite this thing sitting around for like four days before now, I didn't even consider taking those stickers off of it, including one that was a plastic packing slip envelope that would have for sure been an actual fire. So I got 99% of them off. It took like half an hour to do. So we had FedEx shipping labels on it, UPS shipping labels on it, Walker labels, uh, inventory control labels from Amazon, I think, plus some other stickers under those. This thing legitimately had like two feet of stickers on it and it was a disaster. But now it's just time to hang it on the car. I hope that goes smoothly because nothing else really has. So the next thing I'm gonna try and do is actually just get the system picked up and put in the rubber hangers. I'm not gonna worry about bolting it into the front. It should have enough sway for me to get the gasket and bolts and stuff in after it's actually hanging. I'm noticing that these hanging wires are significantly smaller diameter than the original Ford stuff, but all the same, I am going to take some caliper grease and grease those up so they slide nicely in those rubber biscuits so we don't have big fitment problems, I hope. And it should pretty much, fingers crossed, just slip in there. I'm not gonna know how the system actually fits until the muffler shows up, which could be never, so this may be perfect forever. We'll see. But that's the next move I'm going to do. 
I'm going to end up wiggling around all under here, so there's really not going to be an awesome way to film. But if you're playing at home, I do advise you grease up your exhaust stuff before you go for those biscuits. It'll just help. And I use the synthetic disc brake grease because it shouldn't be harmful to rubber. It's also very high temp, so it won't like set on fire. Anyhow, well, I'm going to try and get this stuff hung up. Small update. What I've actually done here is got that rear portion over the rear subframe because of course that needs to happen and put it in the rear hanger. Then I've just got my floor jack under that resonator just to pick it up a little bit. And now the move is going to be to try and get those hooks in those biscuits. I already slid the exhaust as far back as it seems to want to go on that hanger. So it is going to be a monumental nightmare to try and get it in those biscuits, I bet. Let's find out. And I did just decide to grease the biscuits themselves and not the hangers. I just thought that might be a little cleaner. There I go, complain about a bunch of nothing, I guess. Which suits me fine. The more I complain, the better it seems to work. So, pretty please. Oh, that's not even close. Kind of. There we go. Okay. Yay! Holy crap. Turn the camera on for that. I just needed the emotional support from you guys, I guess. And it looks like it might even be remotely lined up at the front. That's good news. I think I'm going to leave the jack under it until I get the front end situated just a little bit. And once again, we're going with I hope vision, meaning I hope you guys can see. And I suspect I may actually have to do this from the front of the car because that's kind of where I had to do all the rest of it from. So we'll find out. So the idea is to put this guy up here with a bolt through it all. If I can just get it started, that will make me happy enough for the moment. Oh yeah, there's plenty of sway to pull this back and do my thing. Okay, you guys know how nuts and bolts work? I'm pretty confident that's the point we're down to. I've got plenty of thread on the other side. So we'll catch back up once I get this all buttoned up. Or when I say all, we'll get this one pipe that I happen to have buttoned up. Well, she's hanging by her own weight and everything else. Took the jack out. And as a wise man once said, all right, all right, all right. So looking okay. There is a loose heat shield on the cat that I'm going to just clamp back on once the clamps show up. So if you hear a rattle, that's what it is. But in the meantime, when I kick this thing, I got to kick it pretty significantly hard to get it to actually impact the car. <laughs> I can actually see that hanger over there is taking no weight. Uh, that's in part because of the wire gauge they used for the hangers themselves. But whatever, it's up. It doesn't hit anything. Goes over the cross member. We'll see how it looks when the muffler shows up, if uh, the muffler ever does show up. And the new muffler has finally arrived a full five days late from Rock Auto. At least they shipped it in a box and nobody put a bunch of stickers all over it. There's just one sticker on it that I'm probably not gonna worry about trying to take off unless I have to. Anyway, so this has arrived almost exactly 24 hours before this car has to be in the alignment shop. So we should be able to get it done. To my complete surprise, I believe my plan here is going to work out as long as I can still get the muffler stuffed on the car with the rest of the system in there. What I've got going on down here is a stainless steel sheet metal exhaust clamp. And this is the smaller one for the tailpipe end. And the idea of how these work, this one's sort of a bad example. But they're usually listed as being for butt joints, so you have two pipes that just come up to each other. I found they work just fine for lap joints too, stuff that slides in and out like this muffler does. But what you do is you just use it like a normal exhaust clamp and just lay on that guy with your impact and it'll tighten down real nice and tight. But it doesn't crush the pipe, so if you need to service this stuff again in the future, it's not a nightmare to get it apart. So if you just use a you know standard U-bolt style exhaust clamp, they almost always deform the pipe and then you just can't get it apart without cutting the pipe and it's a disaster. That guy is, I think, two inch? I'll link it down in the description. This guy, I'm pretty sure, is for a motorcycle. I've never actually found one small enough for an Escort before, for the tailpipe anyway. And it fits back here, but it's a little big. I think it'll probably go okay. And much to my surprise, my tailpipe cutoff is also going to work out just fine. Fits in the new muffler, which I did not expect. I thought for sure that it would end up being a, a butt joint like this. And I was worried this clamp wouldn't be wide enough to cover the gap. But I don't think that's going to be an issue. Because it just slides right in there. And I'll get it adjusted where it needs to go. Move the clamp on down. Tighten her up. And this is also a stainless clamp. There's not much more to this than to do this, and I don't think it'll be a big deal if I am wrong. We will catch back up and talk about it, but I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the rest of the system. I'm going to grease up the hangers and see if I can slip the muffler on in there. The other end of the system is supposed to go inside of the muffler, so then I'll just shoot that sheet metal clamp forward and tighten it down, and 
we should be pretty much done. Let's, let's hope, it's been not much fun. So I've got the muffler under the car and of course it doesn't fit because aftermarket exhaust is never made right. There's the rearmost muffler hanger. Kind of get an idea for the geometry there. That's what I got. That's almost a completely straight rod that is supposed to get up on that hanger. And that's probably every bit of two or three inches away. So it's like at some point this bend got unbent or was not made. This is why I wanted to wait until I had a real torch set to do exhaust crap, because with a real torch, I could just heat that up in about 30 seconds and put a pair of pliers on this and what? What I have instead is a wussy little map gas torch, which is also almost out of gas, but it's probably not gonna be able to get this hot enough to do anything. But I'll try it because I kind of have no other options. The good news is in the past when I would have this problem, it would almost certainly be right next to the gas tank. And the gas tank's like three feet forward of where we are, so not gonna have that issue. So I'm gonna sit here for about three hours, probably in vain, and see if I can get that hot enough to move. It's gonna have to be like glowing red hot. Actually, it's getting there. It's starting to stay cherry. Give it just a little bit more. Yeah, this torch is almost out of fuel. I'm going to see if I've got it high enough. If it needs to rotate. Uh, I think that'll actually be almost perfect once that cools down from just like spaceship hot. I may have to come back and cut some length off of it because it might want to rub on the body. But I can tell you, I don't want to be touching that or messing with it for a significant while. Also, this is allegedly a stainless muffler, so I should not have just been burning uh, any galvanizing off. And since I'm just sitting here chilling anyway, it's as good of a time as any to mention that a map gas torch is way better than no torch at all. Uh, for years and years, I resisted getting one of these. So I thought they were just kind of glorified propane torches, which they sort of are, especially since real map gas is no longer available. You can't buy real map. Now it's all uh, map pro, which is more or less just propane. But these things work better than I ever thought they would. Like you heard a few moments ago, I didn't think it would do that job and it just did, so. So if you don't have one, and you're thinking about grabbing one, I say do it. What I'm doing here is it's just some disc brake grease because it was within reach. And I'm just putting it on there, trying to cool this down. And I don't think it's really working, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something. It does smell really bad, so that's good. Yeah, I totally wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> okay, that is down to a temperature where the exhaust would probably normally operate. Let's see if she'll scrooch on in. Oh, there we go. And I might be able to move the muffler back a little. I'm not sure. And that might keep it from contacting the body. I don't know. I think what I'm going to do, probably once I get this done and get the car back outside, is I'll just take the cutoff wheel and just buzz that little lip right off and just give it like another half inch of clearance and it'll probably be fine. But anyway, yeah, I had to bend that like three or four inches. So it doesn't look like a big deal, and it isn't if you have the right tools, which I just barely did. But it's a big problem if you're you know, a 20-year-old kid in your driveway at home, you don't have any of this crap, which, hey, guess how I learned all this stuff is I was one time a 20-year-old kid in my driveway at home, I didn't have any of this crap. Heed my advice, this stuff never fits right. Uh, this is one of the better fitting aftermarket systems I've seen, but don't expect anything to be a bolt-on because it almost never is. So I'm going to go get that forward clamp positioned where I want it and buzz tight and we'll get our tailpipe on and I think we're going to call this one done. So the clamp I got for the muffler almost works. You can actually probably see it's kind of not round anymore because it's just a little too big. It'll get tight on the outside of the muffler but it doesn't provide any kind of compression to the tailpipe inside of this pipe. So what I think I'm going to do is I need to get the cutoff wheel out and cut that nub off anyway. I think I'm going to cut a couple slots in this guy so it has something to compress and 
See if that works. If it doesn't, then I'll just have to order a U-bolt clamp. And then this muffler and that tailpipe will just be joined together forever at that point, basically. I've never had much luck getting them apart, but it'll be interesting and worth a shot to try it this way. Also, if you were curious and you've never seen one, that's what the other style of clamp looks like installed. And I like to install stuff like this with the bolts pointing up just to try and keep the bottom of the car smooth. Now, granted, that's so far up there, it wouldn't really cause a problem. But stuff hanging down in your chassis can collect, you know, plastic bags and start a fire and all kinds of crap like that. So I always just try to turn those up. But she's on there nice. I don't think she's going to go anywhere and I don't think she's going to leak. So just got my problems to work out with the tailpipe and hopefully we'll be all done. Well, here goes. I think the goal is to just try and slot each side of it without uh, unintentionally slotting anything else. So I think my geometry for that is going to be to kind of angle it a little bit. There's one slot. Two slots. I think before I get real excited, I'm just gonna put the clamp on it and see if the clamp will compress that. It gets tight on there, but I bet it's not tight enough to actually hold the tailpipe, but it'll just slip in. Maybe. I'm not too hopeful, but maybe. Despite what I just said about having things hang a certain way, this thing's going to hang in a way in which I just said I don't like doing because I think that's the way that's providing the best clamping. Modern problems call for modern solutions. And before when I was messing with this thing, it also had a propensity to like slide down the pipe at me and that wasn't helpful at all. Nope. Not good enough. I'm wondering if I try and cut more slots. We're here. May as well. Certainly not the straightest lines ever. But, and if this doesn't work, then I'm done. We'll just have to get a regular old exhaust clamp. I may try clean this tube up some too to see if I can get it to go in more than a freaking half inch. Until then, I'll just beat it with my impact. Because, you know, it's an impact. I don't think I did anything, but whatever. Like the song says, one more last chance. Nope, just pull that right out of there. Did the cuts even help? I don't think so. I don't know. I am gonna take a minute and take a wire wheel to the end of this and see if I can get more of it in there. That could help. So I clean this thing up and I think I see the problem, but I don't think there's a way around it. Despite how flush I tried to cut it to the muffler, this end of it is crimped down, but only like a half inch of it. So this goes up to full diameter here and I have no real reasonable way to crush that back down. So I will try now that's cleaned up and see if it fits back in the muffler, but I don't think it's going to fit any better. I have low hopes. I swear it actually fits worse now. You know what would work is if I could maybe get a screwdriver and pry that thing open. Now I put all those slots in it, maybe it will. And that would let me shove it on in. And then I bet our clamp would work. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I will add right about now's the time to say that this was not worth the 20 bucks. This has already been more effort than it was worth to just buy a new one. But I didn't know that before I tried. So yeah, I think I do have significantly more of it actually in there this time. The clamp is super pissed off about trying to go back on. So that's where it's gonna stay. I'll be dipped, as the man says. Oh yeah, nice and tight. Okay, well, in the one in a million chance you're working on this exact car, that worked out swimmingly. And if you knew that was gonna happen when you went in, it's definitely worth saving the 20 bucks. Now that I've spent, you know, an hour and a half pioneering the technique that I'm sure somebody was probably screaming at me to do the whole time. But anyway, that fits real nice, no rubs. No itch, no scratch. I'm expecting some gigantic clamps to try and secure the heat shield that I know is rattling up at the cat. I'm gonna go check and see if those have been delivered. 
If they have, I'm going to put one on. If they haven't, this car's coming down and we're going to go without it. Spent a little bit of time cleaning some tools up and wham, biggity, bam, the Amazon shipment showed up. I'm using these gigantic hose clamps to clamp a heat shield back to the cat on this thing for two reasons. One, even if my welder was running, I don't have the skills to use it and I wouldn't want to burn a hole through the cat and then have to replace the cat. Equal parts expense and nightmare on this car. It does not look like a fun job to do and you know, cats cost money. And two, I think this is going to be really super easy and super simple to do. I've got eight inch and did I accidentally buy 12? Yeah, I guess I went to extremes with 8 inch and 12 inch. 12 inch is completely gigantic. We won't need that. I think 8 inch is going to be the ticket. Now we'll probably clamp one high and one low and let it ride. And these were also pretty affordable and they're supposed to be stainless. So as much as I kind of hate hillbillying stuff together, sometimes it's the way to go. But before we get under the car, I do want to make sure that these are going to run well. And I do want to see how small they're going to get. And I think I am going to go put another pair of gloves on so I don't like slice myself open immediately. So I'm sure those are a little sharp. Uh, that one runs really nice and it gets super small. Same story here. And I'll need to have them both all the way open to get them on the cat. But I think these eight inches are going to work. Just to kind of show you guys what's up. We are way up at the front of the car. This is the cat. This is the shield that is loose. You can't actually get the shield even out of the thing with the cat on the exhaust manifold and getting the exhaust manifold and all this crap off of this car is no doubt a nightmare. So I don't even want to go there. So I was thinking I would like to do two clamps, but I don't think I'm going to have any kind of decent access to do it. Oh, I think these are both broken. Yeah. I think the best I'm going to do is like put one right around here. Now that I'm looking at it, eight inch might be a little, little snug. We'll see. I need to try and calculate this so that I can actually get on the fastener on this thing too. I don't know, eight inch is gonna be fine. Now the fact that this sounds like a box of razor blades the whole time you screw with it is just awful. It's hurting my ears. I think that'll be okay. And it is totally just going to get the one. Come on. Ouch. Yeah, got her too tight. All right, we're down to the wrench now. I knew this was coming. The good news is it's new tool day in the shop. This is a brand new Stanley quarter inch ratchet that was on clearance for like eight bucks at my grocery store basically. I've never tried a Stanley so I thought we'd try it out. So far I like it. it feels nice. That's, that's gonna be the ticket right there. Shove her up there a little bit more. That's about all I'm gonna be able to do. Well so much for new tool day. It was a monumental pain. So we're gonna go with old tool that should be less work. I think I may have just stripped the head of this thing. I don't know. It's tight though. Okay, now we can revert back to Miss Monsignor Stanley. See if it's actually tight. Yeah, I think so. Oh wow, this got way slack in it. Rather than cut it off because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna kind of bend it so it hopefully doesn't rattle a lot. That guy doesn't rattle anymore. Sweet. And this guy doesn't rattle anymore. Something down here does. I guess maybe if you do it just right, or it's this thing, which I could pretty easily just get rid of. I'm sure there was more to this at some point in time, but it's been long since gone now. Anyway, I believe we've improved things. Let's get this sucker back on the ground, start it up, see how it sounds. I'm hoping quiet. I mean, how could it not be? So let's see how we did. I'm betting pretty freaking good. Oh, yes. That is much nicer. Now I can hear all that terrifying valve train noise on cold start. Really would have hoped for quieter than this, but I'm kind of insulated from it in the interior anyway. It's way louder outside. No more rattle. 
I don't hear the cat rattling. I do hear something rattling a little. Eh, I'm gonna call it a win. Yeah, it looks like maybe I could have done a better job and get the tailpipe up a little higher, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I think she'll be okay. But as always, guys, I wanna thank you for joining me in the shop, especially on projects like this where I just knew going in that I was gonna hate doing it. One of the few things that pulls me over the line is the fact that I get to share it with you. So I wanna thank you guys for letting me do that. Otherwise, it'd just be 100% misery. Well, that's all there is for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.